YouTube Sam here. Well, hopefully we'll get this chair done today, get it completely done so that you can see the ending. I refuse to make another hour video and not have it finished. So, we'll get her done. That's right, I said it. Now we're on to the back here. Got her all painted up decently. Um, on most seats, you would flip this inside out and uh, take your steamer or whatever you had, warm it up as best you can, throw it out in the sun, whatever you got to do, and you'd kind of stick it on like a sock and roll it all the way down. This is different. This is actually quite a bit easier. That's one thing that is easier about this uh, Corvette seat is that um, because it's got such a wide open back, it all just kind of leans over. I still am going to steam this area um, just so we don't have any problems. But basically what you're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to hog ring this down inside the grooves just like the um, seat bottom. First of all I need to bend this up, hog ring this down into here. But first of all, all together, I want to make sure that the seat is where it needs to be before we start holding it down. And basically this needs to go around here, this needs to go around here, and this needs to go around in here. So that's, that's about where we're going to be. And I'm going to actually use the last seat. But these are the ones that came with the seat. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, now if you put that side by side with an actual hog ring here, they are pretty close to the same uh, radius, I guess, I don't know exactly what you'd say, but they're close enough to where I am just going to use uh, regular hog rings. That's what I did on the last seat too, because they are about the right size, they hold better, and these are just a pain in the butt. So I got my hog rings right here, and my hog ring pliers right here, and basically you just take them like that, we're going to stuff them down, when you get it where you want it around the two bars that hold the seat together you squish it together and that holds it together trouble getting to this here so what i've done i've stuck a hog ring right where this hole is here and where i want to come down through this one i'm also going to stick another hog ring in that area Hopefully that'll give me kind of a point to shoot for and grab a hold of with the seat right. there. Now I've got the seat hopefully back where I want it again here. Okay. And like I said, I have this a hog ring down below here and now I'm going to go back where this hole is and hopefully grab a hold of the bar down here and I know you can't see this and I apologize for that but it would be impossible. I'm having trouble enough as it is finding what I'm looking for here there is that like I nailed it. And basically, in case you didn't quite understand it, I put a hog ring here, then I put a hog ring on the center bar, one of the bar that's like this but up in the center here, this bar here, hopefully you can see that, probably not. And I just grabbed a hold of this hog ring here and, and cinched it and that should be good enough. I have another one right here and I'm going to do the same thing and hopefully that will do the trick. If I remember doing this with the last one and I had kind of forgotten. Like I said, I don't know if I said it actually or not. Um, 
it's been a couple weeks since I did the last seat now and my memory doesn't last as long as it used to. That was not easy. Now we gotta go along. We're gonna do the same thing to this side with this bar. We're gonna go and augering it in to the bar that's going across the bottom down here just like we did the bottom seat. All this is pretty much similar as the bottom seat only difference is we're using hog rings instead of the wires um, so I'm just gonna go ahead get that done go to the next one. On. Now it's time for the steamer and once again if you don't have one of these which there's a good chance you don't they're actually pretty cheap and they work awesome for uh, ironing your clothes since we bought this thing we've never ironed anything since because it just takes all the wrinkles out uh, second of all you can use one of your steamer irons like I said in the last video um, uh, you just have to be real careful because if you touch this vinyl with a hot iron you will melt it and it will screw it up and basically that just makes it super pliable so it'll go around here and heat up this other side too. It's pretty darn cold in my shop here so now if you got one of these that has a metal end on it you got from a garage sale or something you can't just stick it right on the vinyl like this plastic one it will burn up your vinyl and you got to still be careful even with these you don't want to over overheat it too much or it will start shrinking on you And I'll have to straighten things out, get everything pulled in. Now, uh, if you watched my other video, video uh, I might even be in this one. I can't remember if it was the seat or what. Yeah, it was probably was the seat. But you want to make sure that this welt here is sticking the same direction in here, um, up underneath here. This right here, you want that facing out. So, all right. Ring tires, oh. and here's where this seat finally becomes sort of easier. Not completely, because there's still more, but sort of easier. And these start doing here. But before I do that, I gotta do some welding, which kind of sucks, because that stops me here. Um, this piece that goes up in here and catches the seat, I need that in there before I can put this in. I mean, I could stick this under here and then try and get it up in there, but quite honestly, it kind of fits around this pretty tight. So I'm gonna have to see if I can't weld that up, fix it, and that'll be the next thing you see me do. This is where I say, if you do something I do, like weld up that seat bracket there, or any of the things I do basically and you hurt yourself I'm not responsible if you don't like the way I'm doing it don't do it piece here that goes into the back of the seat and holds the seat from falling forward and it was busted and bent and messed with to try and make it work without this piece they actually hooked it around the back of the seat so it would grab a hold uh, but that's not as safe as I would like it to be so if I can I'm gonna bend these back straight and we're gonna weld them up Kind of propped up here and set up hopefully where they will stay we shall see and I'm gonna hopefully not screw it all up by putting that on there That'll work and it helps turn your welder on ugly but welded yeah that's what grinders are for people know this but in case you're young and haven't quite been around the block yet take things that you want to paint especially screws and bolts and things like that you can stick them down in a box here and that kind of holds them so you can give them a fairly even coat of paint without holding them in your fingers getting your fingers all full of paint and they can sit there and dry and when you're done you know you don't have little finger marks all over them because you're trying to paint them separately 
it's a good little tip and trick most people like I said out there know it but hey you never know what kind of first timers you get and quite honestly that's mainly what I make my videos for um, I hope I can teach a few people old dogs new tricks so to speak but for the most part I do this for the young ones the easy part here um, basically we're just gonna take this and put it back together with hog rings this part's real simple take your hog ring put it in your hog ring pliers find where this needs to go I usually put my hog ring kind of in there first, that way it pulls it around. And of course, when I say it's easy, I make it look hard. Just take it and put it in your spectacle here. And I would say, if there's anything I've done on YouTube video, uh, upholstery is probably one of my more professional things. I actually went to school for it and I learned the proper ways to do things, learned how to sew everything up, I can do everything head to toe when it comes to the interior of a car. So uh, when it comes to this I would say although I still learn things every day as everybody should, this is something I do know what I'm talking about. A bit of a nerve wracking part for me right here. We need to fit this on there's a little button down here that is for that thing I welded up that holds the seat and this is where yet again not the fault of the seat cover but you know they got to make it to every plan and shape and size that these may vary to and unfortunately this comes up quite a bit further than I would have sewn it if I would have sewn it and um, I am going to have to cut into some of the threads, which is kind of a no-no in the world of upholstery because these can unravel, but there's really no other way of doing it. You're, we're going to have to cut some of this out. This has got to fit on right here, and there's no way you're getting it there without cutting away some material here. So you got to just be careful, cut a little bit at a time, and as little as you possibly can. And uh, I'm going to stick this underneath here and kind of get an idea of where it's going to give you a closer look. This is where we're at here. Um, I open up the flap, and down there, this is what I put in there. Right there. So I'm going to put that in, hopefully, without making you sick. Okay, stuck that in there. Now, like I said, I'm just kind of filling, and I know right where the outsides of that is. Now, this upholstery needs to go up underneath that um, as much as we can. So I'm just going to take off a little bit right across this area here and do it a little bit at a time until I can fit that piece on there on the outside and the button works and everything's cinched down and no upholstery is hopefully coming out from behind it. I'll give you All right. Look. I've had to cut some of these plastic pieces off of here as you can see I took some actual metal shears that I have and uh, did that poke the holes where the screws are going to go down for this and I actually kind of tried not to but I had to cut into this area and I'm just folding that down into there so that it is as much as I can leave as possible now with these flaps this one goes down first. This one kind of clips over the top of it. Um, and then that sits in there like that. And then your piece just goes on top. Now, I had to cut this shorter than I wanted to, which is unfortunate, but I think I'm going to be able to make it work because uh, this thing just would not sit down inside that hole with this big lump here. All right. Well, and there it is. It's on there. Hopefully, we won't have any problems with any of this coming loose here. If so, uh, somewhere down the line, I'll have my upholstery stuff taken back out again when I get on that. And uh, I can fix it for them if I have to. Nerve racking parts where you got to kind of take and uh, cut these holes out. 
And what I'm going to do, because I hate cutting slices. Slices tend to tear. Uh, so in each corner here, maybe down a little bit, I'm going to take and put a hole like that. And like that. That kind of gives me, although I don't know how much it'll help, that gives me a bit of a area where I can slice from kind of a hole to a hole. And I got a good sharp razor blade here. So it's brand new. Just fairly thick vinyl yet again. These are fairly well done seats. And that will go down like that. I'm actually something I should have done too. Side. I'm actually going to take these spots here, go a little bit further down, put a couple more holes here, and that will hopefully stop it from, if this gets pulled, from tearing. Um, not a whole lot you can do with the tear. Uh, luckily, if it, it was something like that was to happen, it is behind this cover here. And this, I'm going to do the same thing on this side over here. This is where these plates right here hook down over the top of this. So that plate will come on and hook down there. I'll do the same thing to this side and we can put the back on. Yeah. Why am I putting this crappy back on after I spent all that time painting all the underside and all that and putting this crappily painted broken back piece on here um, because quite honestly it is too cold in my shop to do any more painting especially on vinyl especially since this has been painted once over a black one unfortunately and it needs completely prepped and sanded and probably somewhat stripped glued back together um, it's got all kinds of problems so first of all you can find another set of these that are black um, or He's going to have to wait until it warms up in my shop and I can do the, all the stuff on this because vinyl is one of the, or plastic, I don't even call this vinyl, plastic, uh, whatever this is, um, it's really hard to paint and you need everything to be right and you need to have the right kind of products and cleaners and sand it and lots of, lots of labor involved to not have this happen. Um, so I'm not going to do that right now because it is it's just too cold in my shop uh, so it wouldn't come out well anyway so I'm putting this on the way it is for now if he wants me to paint it later I will do so uh, he may want to get new new pieces just because this is never going to be right you choose to follow me or not you do it if you like it don't do it if you don't uh, this piece here needs to go in like this one here so I just take an all find the hole and I'm gonna punch that as big as I can but these are quite large and you try and put that in there it gets all screwed up and rips things so what I like to do is actually take this little uh, soldering iron here you probably can't see me so I get to do this left-handed and I burn this. Now I'm sure there's lots of nasty stuff coming off here. I probably shouldn't be breathing in. And quite honestly, I normally hold my breath when I do that kind of stuff. Which probably doesn't work. And then I'll kind of take this after it's cooled a little bit and just kind of waller it out a little bit. And that does two things. It opens up that hole to a nice circle to put this in. And also, if a piece gets caught on there or something like that, um, it won't tear or rip or anything like that. And that goes in real easy. So you can choose to do something like that if you want. It does help it keep from ripping. Probably not the healthiest thing for you to do. Seat here, And I'm going to do the same thing. Um, as I did on that back part of the seat here. Uh, there's going to be holes put along here. Uh, you could sit here and fill for them and figure out where they need to go or, like I do, you can come under here and you can find that 
kind of hold on the other side, feel where it's poking through, and poke it through with an awl. And do that all the way through all these holes here. And that gives you a pretty good idea where things are going to go. Then I'm going to take my trusty soldering iron and I'm going to go through those holes and widen them out for the things that need to be put in them. One of those nerve wracking holes. The ones are right in the side here that uh, the back part of the seat hinges on. And what I did is I kind of looked down through here, found where the hole is, and I stuck this uh, pick through the hole. Now if I was to sick it all the way through, it would poke up too high. So follow that back with your finger. Fill where that's coming through at. And then kind of fill around so you know you have it. And stick your awl in there. Make that a fairly large hole. And yet again, I'm going to go through. I'm going to burn this out a little bit with my uh, soldering iron there. And these will stick right in. I got the one on the other side done here. Being carefully putting this on here. This goes back behind here. And we're finding our hole. And it will move around on you a bit. Well, you get the right spot, and you can screw it on down one here. Here that we need to bolt on. Now this is lost. It wasn't here when I got it, so I'm just going to leave that there. And if he gets another one, he can put it in. All right, and then don't forget this piece here. I almost forget forgot that. And that will go right into the holes we made in the middle here. Quite honestly, you don't need to see me screw these in. You should know how to use right, right YouTube. Plan. They're finally all done. Hopefully you've enjoyed these videos. Uh, by no means are they perfect. I realize up in here, especially for some reason in that camera, it's really wrinkly looking up in these top areas. Um, in real life, yes, there are wrinkles, but they actually don't look as bad as the camera's actually putting it out to be, surprisingly. Um, but like I said, if you've watched any of the other videos, you'll know how to fix this stuff. Um, it is not, like I've been saying the whole time, it is not the fault of the seat. It is the, I'm using old foam. I didn't put any padding in here. Um, if I was doing it for a customer, that's what I would do. But honestly, he just wanted me to get these done, uh, put the seat covers on them. Uh, like I said before, in the beginning, he didn't even want me to take the old seats off. Um, he just thought I could just put these over the top. And uh, it, it won't work that way. These kind of seats won't work that way. They do make seat covers you can put over the top. Quite honestly, they're crap. I wouldn't buy any of them. And uh, these are very good seats. They didn't pay me anything. I don't even know where he got them from. So that's how good these seats are. I really, truly, honestly believe these are very good seat covers. Um, I told you in, an, in, I don't remember if it was this video or another video, uh, where where they came from. So go check them out if you need this. Um, get yourself some cotton batting and put it a whole layer of cotton batting over the top of your old foam. Uh, better yet, go get some new foam and these would look absolutely professional and beautiful. Um, I think they look way better than they did before. He's going to get a lot more use out of them and for the price he paid he, he should be very happy. So anyway this is Sam, Jack of all, master of none. Y'all have a good one.